All right. Thank you. And hi, my name is Rafael Toledo. And today I will talk a bit about Kotlin and its support for multi-platform projects. So uh, at this time, I, I work on, uh, on ThoughtWorks as a consultant, focusing primarily on mobile projects related to Android. And if you want to follow me on Twitter to find some useful links about mobile, Android, and Google-related technologies, or just to, to ask, ask some, some questions about any of these subjects. Uh, and inside my GitHub page, you can find some useful projects mostly related to Android and Kotlin. All right, uh, before we begin, let's put everyone on the, the same page about Kotlin. And how many, how many of you are currently working with Kotlin? Some, some of you, and who never listened uh, about Kotlin or never coded uh, a single line with Kotlin? All right, great. So Kotlin is an open source programming language created by JetBrains back in 2010 with the primary goal of helping on development of its IDEs. Uh, if you want uh, anyone here does know about JetBrains, they, they are a company that develops IntelliJ, the base of Android Studio, and another IDEs for languages like Ruby, Python, uh, C++, and others. Uh, the first table release of Kotlin was in 2016, and since then, uh, their language got another two major versions with a new one coming in the next month, probably, probably on the Kotlin Conf uh, next month. Kotlin is statically typed, safe, and pragmatic. And what does, does it mean? Uh, Kotlin projects, uh, Kotlin protects you from common errors like the famous new pointer exception by add, adding the possibility of uh, checking the new, the new values that will be made at the compile time. And by pragmatic, I can say that you write less code to do exactly the, the same that you would do in Java, for example. <laughs> and moreover, Kotlin code is very explicit on its syntax. You will quickly under, understand what is being done uh, in a specific code snippet, mostly of the, the, the time. And its design is inspired by languages like Java, C Sharp, Scala, and if you already know an, an, any other C-like language, you can quickly start with Kotlin, including Swift. And the language is object-oriented with some functional features like lambdas, streams, and high-order functions. And Kotlin also tends to force immutability. Uh, an example of this is that all classes are final by default. If you want some class to be extended, you need to explicitly mark it as an open class. <laughs> All right, uh, this chart shows the, the number of lines of code present on GitHub in the last years. We can see how much it, it is growing, mostly because of the announcement of Kotlin uh, as one of the officially supported languages for Android develop, development by Google. And, but this is not the only field where Kotlin is gaining force. More and more teams are using it. Uh, companies like Samsung, Microsoft, the N26 Bank, and even some Brazilian companies like the OLX and Moipi uh, are using Kotlin for backend development. For those who don't know uh, Hadi Hariri, he's a developer advocate from JetBrains, and I totally recommend uh, following him on Twitter to know more, more about Kotlin and its news and, and so. Uh, if anyone that does know uh, technologies radar from, from, from ThoughtWords, uh, I will summarize here. The technology radar is a semester of publication 
publication from ThoughtWorks where we group experience from different projects around the world and compile our opinions about te techniques, languages, tools and platforms. And they are classified uh, in adopted, trial, access or hold. In the last edition, Kotlin jumped from access to trial and then to adopt. And this means that Kotlin is being used in produ production in a lot of projects with success inside ThoughtWorks. Um, Pusher is a company that the developers a popular SDK for push notifications on mobile. Uh, and they did a, a survey about Kotlin and publishing some interesting results about the language, its use, and, and more. Uh, I recommend you to, to visit this, this link and read a bit more about the current state of Kotlin in the, in the market today. So, what makes Kotlin a great language? Here we have some of the features that Kotlin offers to us when developing with it. Um, that, that data classes for, for data, type alias for clarity, new safety, uh, properties, extension functions, and other features make Kotlin a robust set of tools when developing uh, various types of applications, not only on Android. Uh, and when we talk about platforms, the ecosystem of Kotlin applications grew in the last years, uh, starting with JVM and, as a consequence, uh, Android. Kotlin jumped from uh, JavaScript support introduced in 1.0 as experimental and then stable in 1.1 uh, release, and now to, to run native code uh, starting on 1.2. Uh, and all right, Kotlin is an option for each of those platforms. So why it's good? It's a good idea to use Kotlin on, e uh, on each of, of those. All right, why to use Kotlin to Android development? Uh, the, fir the, first point, the, the, the first point that uh, we need to, to highlight here is the capability to generate bytecode uh, compatible with Java 6. Anyone that works with uh, Android knows about the fragmentation of the, the platform. And besides the support of Java 8 on Android Nougat, we still need to support a range of versions, making difficult to, to adopt some of the, the, those new features on our projects. And when Kotlin started to gain traction inside the Android community, much of, the, of its appeal was the possibility to use uh, modern uh, language features in those kind of environments. Another point is performance. An, an app writing in Kotlin uh, will behave exactly the same as uh, an app written in Java, he, at the end, the, uh, the bytecode co is converted to, to a DEX file exactly the same way as Java. Uh, the type of bytecode from Android is a, a bit different from the JVM one. And interoperability is another fantastic feature from Kotlin. Uh, as you keep the same set of libraries that you are used to, to use. And Kotlin not only can operate with Java code, but also create some syntax sugar for some cases. And an interesting example is where Kotlin finds a getter and setter in a Java bytecode. It will, uh, it will see it as a property when consuming that Java code. And the impact of Kotlin when using it for Android development is another thing that made it so popular. Unlike uh, another options like Groovy or Scala, when using Kotlin, the impact on the size of the, the APK, APK, it's about a uh, few hundred uh, kilobytes only. Um, compilation time was another problem on the first stable version of Kotlin. 
but today the impact on compilation time is minimal. Uh, and at last, but not less important, Kotlin was designed thinking in a smooth transition to Java developers. If you have prior experience with Java, you have a smooth transition to, to Kotlin code. All right, so when to use, when and why to use Kotlin for JVM de development? Uh, why Kotlin is an excellent, excellent tool, choice when developing for the JVM? Well, Kotlin Expressivit is undoubtedly uh, a lot better in comparison with Java. Uh, you not only avoid writing boilerplate code, but, to, but also the Kotlin code makes, makes your code more explicit with its intentions. Performance and scalability uh, are two major concerns when choosing a language for backend development. And an, an example of how Kotlin can help in this subject is the use of coroutines. Coroutines is a, are a, a mechanism of asynchronous programming si uh, similar to async and await patterns from other languages. And your asynchronous code will not only be more readable, but will also perform a lot better in comparison with the use of threads. And gradual migration uh, and the learning curve of the, the development on the JVM is, is the, the, the same benefits as Android. And as a language developed by JetBrains, you can expect also a, a great IDE and tooling support. And this was a thing since the, the, the first pre-release version of Kotlin. One example of the support of Kotlin is Spring Framework. Uh, starting with the version 5.0, Spring added first-class support for Kotlin. And this version adds nullability data to its methods, signatures. You can safety call, call them from Kotlin and also include some kind of DSLs for bin configuration. And if anyone are interested in using Spring with Kotlin, um, you, you can follow this link that I will make available at the end of this presentation. If your application is focused on desktop development, or yes, the, the desktop application still exists, uh, there's also a framework built on top of Java FX uh, called Tornado FX. It uh, adds a lot of extra functionality like dependency injection, REST client, async tasks, execution, and other cool features. Uh, if you need to write desktop applications. And if you prefer a lightweight uh, solution for building APIs, Kator is another good option. Uh, developed, developed by JetBrains, Kator is an extensible framework for building server and client applications. And by using the power of DSLs, uh, your application will be conci concise and result in code easily under understandable. Cater is under activity develop active development and can be found under this link. Well, uh, here we enter into another realm of programming languages. Uh, why would I use Kotlin for developing JavaScript applications? Uh, Kotlin, since its version 1.0, transpiles to, to, to JavaScript. And at this moment, J the generated code is ECMAScript 5.1, but there are plans to upgrading this to newer versions soon. Uh, we know that when talking about uh, the web world, the size of the applications matter. So Kotlin includes a mechanism called DCE, or Dead Code Elimination. With this plugin, the, the final JavaScript uh, will be shrinked, and all you, you know that code will be cleaned up from the, the, the generated JavaScript. Uh, 
Uh, this will result, this, this results in very small applications, even when using frameworks like React. And this uh, generated JavaScript is also uh, legible and debuggable, and you can interact with any JavaScript code. And uh, here we have a, a big thing. The JavaScript standard library from Kotlin have exactly the same functionality as the JVM standard library, including the coroutine support. So you can use exactly the same mechanism for asynchronous code, both in the J JVM code and the JavaScript code. And this will save a lot of dependencies, usually uh, added for common operations like string parsing, uh, sorting, filtering, and other things. So the standard library of Kotlin is very rich in terms of functionality. So uh, if JavaScript is not statically typed, how can Kotlin handle this? For any uh, statically typed APIs, like libraries written in TypeScript, Kotlin provides a tool for easy mapping. Uh, TS2KT creates a Kotlin file that can be imported in, uh, in your JavaScript project and then you will be able to call it easily in your, in your app. If you are invoking some dynamic type JavaScript, then you can just map the types as dynamic, it's uh, a keyword of, of Kotlin, and then uh, this variable can be converted to any type uh, with casts when needed. All right, and JetBrains also offers some wrappers for some popular JavaScript libraries like React, Redux, and Mocha. Uh, they can be imported in your build script uh, as a normal dependence, and that's it. Uh, JetBrains made a, a, an excellent work on mapping the dynamic types and made the, making these libraries type safe for, for Kotlin. So here we have uh, some example of code, code calling uh, JavaScript code with Kotlin. Uh, there's not so much people that still use jQuery today, but uh, the standard library of Kotlin includes the mapping of the jQuery. So you, you just need to, to call the jQuery function and start using um, using jQuery inside your custom code. Here we have uh, an example of React, uh, uh, React component written in, in Kotlin. <laughs> it's a bit more verbose because of the generics, but it's like a React code type safe. Uh, and also, instead of the GSX, the the Kotlin wrapper uses the power uh, the power of the DSLs to make the code more readable without the feeling of mixing two different languages. This is particular for for some developers that jump in React. And well, maybe it's not exactly a viable solution, but it's doable. You can also write a backend app with Node.js, Express, and Kotlin. The example shows uh, a simple Express application with an endpoint, an endpoint that re returns it's doable. Not viable, but doable. <laughs> All right, so now we enter into the third realm of Kotlin, the, the native development. So, you can ask me, what? Native development? I believe that my Android app was native. Well, uh, when we say native in this case, uh, means that your application is compiled. It runs natively into some specific iOS and specific architecture. Uh, Kotlin native don't have a VM and is, it, its backend is based on uh, LVM. And as other, any other Kotlin targets, you can also integrate your code with ex existing libraries and existing code. Uh, 
Uh, this can be done using a, a tool called the C interop that generates uh, a Kotlin file based on a header file from C or C++. Kotlin native also supports Objective-C and Swift. And this means that you can write Kotlin code for Mac OS and iOS apps. Kotlin native still don't have uh, a stable 1.0 version, but right now it, it is in active development. The latest, the, the latest version uh, 0.9 uh, is based on the next major version of Kotlin 1.3, and that adds some cool features to make the interoperability better, like uh, unsigned types. That is, is very common when writing native code. And Kotlin native supports a lot of platforms like Windows, like uh, Linux, Mac OS, uh, iOS. Uh, including um, older versions with um, ARM32, Android, and even WebAssembly, the, the future of the, the web. Well, this fragment shows uh, how we can, we can configure say, this, the, the Sinterop tool to map an existing code to be used inside Kotlin. This script uh, uses the Kotlin native grady plugin and make use of his, its DSL to set up the necessary steps and collect the required data. So basically, we point to a file where we will put some definitions about the library, in this case the curl, uh, and it's also possible to set up different configurations for different target, targets like Mac OS and Linux in this case. Inside the definition file, uh, we select which header files we want to be mapped by Kotlin. And some specific linker options needed to be passed to make this, this code compile and work when integrating with this library. Uh, and inside the dev file is also, is also possible to select uh, the language of the target files if you are working with Objective-C or anything not, not exactly C or C++. So that's it. Kotlin file will be generated at compile time and uh, with all the type definitions and functions specified in the header files. The, the Kotlin standard library for native projects uh, contains some particular types like the C pointer and some extensions to convert like the array of chars to Kotlin strings and so. And you can note that this, this notation using snake case is not is not common in the in the Kotlin world, but in this case, it's, it's a, a common pattern to wrap up those functions and isolate this code in our own Kotlin code to match the code style in the entire project. Well, uh, the Kotlin native also has an excellent tooling, including plugins for Clion, the C++ and C IDE from JetBrains, and for AppCode, the IDE for macOS and iOS developing from JetBrains as well. Uh, those plugins add out completely uh, linters and even some wizards to create Kotlin native projects from native uh, platforms or iOS. All right, so. Here we have some, some links pointing to the official docs of Kotlin. And if anyone uh, is interested in reading more about any of the, the support platforms, just jump into those links. And at, at, the, at, the, at the end of this presentation, there's a link on speaker deck where you can access the completely slides. All right. 
until now we talked about each platform as a, a separated one. So if Kotlin uh, supports all of them, why not to share code between them? Why not? It's like the right ons run everywhere version <laughs> the 2018. It's like like that. All right, uh, multi-platform support for Kotlin was added on version 1.2, uh, initially as experimental, and support co uh, code sharing between JVM and JavaScript projects. Native, as it not it's being actively uh, developed, is not precisely supported, but works with some minor tweaks. Well, when developing multi-platform projects with Kotlin and Gradle, there are three types of modules, the common, the platform, and the regular. The common module are the ones where you will put uh, the code that will be used as it is on all the platforms. This kind of module can also include classes and function definitions that that have specific implementation details on each platform. Uh, the platform modules are the concrete modules that will be consumed by the library or the application on JVM or on the JavaScript or native. If the common code uh, specifies something to be implemented in a specific way, uh, those must be implemented here in the, the platform mod modules. And we also have some linters and, the, and compile safety to, uh, to make sure that the, the specific code is being implemented in each of the, those modules. And regular modules are just the normal ones that you use to on, on Gradle projects. All right, here we have a, a sample script of how to configure and how to set up a multi-platform module. Um, it's common Gradle, that there's not particular here. You just need to pay attention to the plugin. In this case, it's Kotlin platform common, and the, the dependencies is standard library version common, and also the test compile dependency is also common. Why? This uh, will allow us, uh, allow the compiler to plug the specific details of implementation on each platform when this shared code uh, would be run on, on any specific platform. So, all right, I, I, I will define this on the common module and this on the JVM module. So here I, I will specify the plugin platform JVM and the trick here is the dependency of the common module by using the expected by uh, type of dependency. This will, make, will say, all right, this specific module is uh, is compiling the, the compiling the the common code to a specific platform. If the common uh, the common module delegates something to the, the specific modules, uh, the the compiler will will require us to to make so. And in the JavaScript will be exactly the same. The Kotlin platform JS and expected by project common. On native is a bit trickier as it is not uh, stable yet and on each of the releases of Kotlin native everything that used it to work it doesn't work anymore but it's normal it's not uh, a stable release yet so I, I apply the plugin Kotlin platform native and also as expected by project common and the standard library included in these native uh, projects is the the 
the normal one without any suffix, just Kotlin standard library. So, um, in specific case of native, you also need to set up some some extra uh, data as the targets. In this case, uh, iOS, the name of the the library that will be generated by the the, the, plug the plugin, and the the output uh, output key kind. In this case, as I am targeting the Apple platforms, I, need, I, I want the output of this library to be a framework. You can make it a uh, SO file, a uh, DLL, and, or even an exec executable if this is an end application and not exactly a, a library. All right, so how, how, how I, I need to, to write this code, the, this common code, on on on, on multi-platform module. Basically, the trick here is the expect uh, keyword. What does it mean? Uh, it it means that the common module specified a uh, an interface for for a class called foo in, the, in this case that any specific module should implement. Right, and on the specific modules, when I'm declaring the, the, the class full, I need to add the, the keyword actual. This means that I am implementing uh, a specific code declared in a common module. And that is, is there's no, no, no secret here. So, uh, when implementing multi-platform uh, projects, we are not limited, limited only to the Kotlin standard library. Some other projects recently added support to, for, for that kind of, of projects. Coding is a library to allow, allow us to create a dependency injection container to our project and it also added some, some more functionality as uh, a multi-platform JSON for uh, parsing, uh, some HTTP client, and even a NoSQL database implementation. So we can use those uh, libraries in multi-platform projects. And tests are also essential and Kotlin already support the implementation of uh, basic test, test setup and, and assertions on its base library. You, you, can, you, you can and you should uh, write tests when implementing multi-platform code. But uh, when creating a test, we frequently need to mock classes and interface to isolate behavior. And mock, it's like mock with uh, a double key. Uh, added experimental uh, support for multi-platform projects recently. Make it easy to mock with Kotlin by using uh, some DSL capabilities of the language. Even on JVM projects, I, I am using mock instead of Mokito because of the, some of the new assertions of Mokiro that uses to, to break uh, on Kotlin projects. So, Moki, it's a, a very good tool for, for mocking classes in, in Kotlin projects. Well. All right. We are already using Kotlin on all, all those platforms and we are sharing code between them. So why not to use Kotlin on our build scripts as well? Why is a thing to use Kotlin on our, our Gradle scripts? Uh, the first one is performance. The Gradle project uh, itself moved all the, the, all the build scripts from Groovy to Kotlin and as Kotlin is a statically typed language, when the project turns bigger and bigger and bigger, the impact on performance compared to Groovy uh, gets better and better and better and better. 
uh, it, as a, uh, a aesthetically typed language, the the ID support it's also better with autocomplete and statically analysis and the use of the same language on the whole project is also uh, a good thing. Languages like Ruby and Elixir already have this approach and make sense on the world of Kotlin also. Uh, the API is now stable with the release candidate uh, being shipped with Kotlin 4.10 and the stable 1.0 release is planned to be shipped with Gradle 5 in the next major it's the next major version of of Gradle so here we have an example of a groovy script in Gradle and here we have a Kotlin script for for Gradle the difference are very minimal as the the using of uh, double quotes for for strings that are flexible on, on on groovy and are not flexible on <laughs> on godly some some method evocations that well we need to to make them in the kotlin way but the the script is basically the same, both in Kotlin and Groovy. So, it's a very good thing. And just to, to finish, as my time is running out, what if we had a full-stack project written in Kotlin? As we have Kotlin on all of those platforms, why not a full-stack project in Kotlin? So, to prove that it's doable, JetBrains, alright, JetBrains, obviously, made the Kotlin Conf app a full stack uh, project written Kotlin. The back end is using Kator, the front end is using React.js with the bindings to, to Kotlin, Android is written in Kotlin, and some of the, the logic is, comp is shared on iOS that on the last year was using Objective-C and this year with the development of uh, Kotlin Native is it, it already has some points written in Swift. The, the compatibility get, got a lot better on the, in, the, in the last year. There's another project that uh, uses the, the same approach that is Kotlin Academy that not only makes the back-end, the front-end, Android, iOS, but also a native desktop written in JavaFX. And there are plans to write a Chrome plugin written in Kotlin. All right. If anyone interested, are, are interested in learning more about, about Kotlin, not only its application multi-platform projects, but also in any specific context. Here we have the official blog of Kotlin. If you never played with Kotlin, there are also the Kotlin cones that are um, a great starting point to learn the language. And Kotlin in Action is just the, the best book available to start, to start with Kotlin. All right. Uh, thank you. If anyone uh, wants to uh, share information, just ping me on my email, and this deck will, will be available soon on my speaker deck, speakerdeck.com slash Rafael Toledo. And thank you for uh, your, your attention and for attending my talk. Thank you.